Please stand. We meet today in the presence of a God whose love is freedom, whose touch is healing, whose voice is calm. We meet not in our own strength, but in the knowledge that God's spirit abides within us, in our worship today, in our daily lives when we depart from this place. The blessing received is shared in the hope that others might be drawn to the God we serve. Amen. <laughs>
that we may be devoted to you with our whole heart and united to one another with pure affection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. A reading from the book of Ezekiel. The Lord said to me, O mortal, stand up on your feet, and I will speak with you. And when he spoke to me, a spirit entered to me into me and set me on my feet. I heard him speaking to me. He said to me, Mortal, I am sending you to the people of Israel, a nation of rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their descendants have transgressed against me to this very day. The descendants are impudent and stubborn. I am sending you to them, and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord, whether they hear or refuse to hear, for they are a rebellious house, they, will, they shall know that there has been a prophet among them. The word of the Lord. Today's psalm is Psalm 123, found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 780 or in your ordo. We will recite together the psalm. To you I lift up my eyes. To you I open the heavens. As the eyes of the earth is Lord to the hand of the masters, and the eyes of the maid of the hand of the ministers, so our eyes look to the Lord our God, until he show us his mercy. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy, for we have had more than enough of contempt. Too much to scorn. A reading from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. I know a person in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that such a person, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. Was caught up into paradise and heard things that are not to be told. That no mortal is permitted to repeat. On behalf of such a one, I will boast, but on my own behalf, I will not boast, except of my weaknesses. But if I wish to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will be speaking the truth. But I refrain from it, so that no one may think better of me than what is seen in me or heard from me, even considering the exceptional character of the revelations. Therefore, to keep me from being too elated, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that it would leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. So I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary and brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor, except in their hometown, and among their own kin, and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went out about among the villages teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two, and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to make nothing, take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed all that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil, many who were sick, and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. choices. 
I could either react with anger or I could let them form me into something that would be good, that would be a good force for the world. And that, of course, was the avenue that he chose. He chose to let his inflictions form him into the priest that he was so that he could talk about those things to other people. And we get faith again in our gospel today as well as we actually get a little note on what the absence of faith can do to us. We hear that Jesus comes to his hometown, his own hometown that he was raised in, to do the same things that he's been doing. Preach the word, healing the sick, doing signs and wonders. And yet here he finds nothing but disbelief. There is absolutely no faith in Jesus Christ as being the Son of God in his own hometown. And so today's gospel is as much about unbelief, unfaith, as it is about faith. But I guess in a way we can kind of relate to the hometown crowd, right? They probably see Jesus coming into the temple and said, no, we know him. We know him. He's uh, Joseph's son, right? The carpenter, the handyman, he does a lot of work around here. Yeah, we know his brothers and sisters. We're all friends with them. Where in the world is he getting this knowledge? Who taught him to talk like this? Wow. We've never heard him speak like this before. What's going on with him? Well, actually, I'll give you a note. It's common in the Episcopal Church that when a priest goes out to seminary, he never goes back to his home parish for that very reason. When you go back, people still see you as little Jimmy Teets, who was the acolyte. Not someone who has gone through seminary and been ordained. And so Jesus was feeling that same thing. People's pre, uh, pre conventions of him, of who he was, overshadowed the things that he was doing. The words that he was saying, the way that he was able to heal in the past. And what a difference this is from last week's gospel. We heard about the superpower of faith. Jairus and his daughter and the hemorrhaging woman, both reaching out to Jesus in faith to be healed. And of course they were. And what was Jesus' word to them both? Not my faith has made you well, but he told them, your faith has made you well. The first step to the power of God in our lives is our faith. Without our faith, nothing can happen. Nothing good can come. It comes when we have that faith and display that faith. Just like it did with Jairus. And just like it did with the hemorrhaging woman. I'll note to you that both of those were Gentiles. And today Jesus is home in a crowd of his fellow Jews. And yet they had no belief in him. And so we hear him say these words in here that really should, in a way, cut us to our heart. He was amazed at their unbelief. You can rephrase that as, he was amazed at their lack of faith. They had no faith whatsoever that the words he was speaking, which were more often than not, were right out of the Bible. They were right out of Isaiah and right out of Deuteronomy. But still, they did not believe. Even though word came that he had healed people, they did not believe. And we wonder why that was. It couldn't be just because they knew him from before. Maybe they had a wrong conception about how God works. Particularly about how God works in our lives. Maybe they were thinking of something big and extravagant that was going to happen that Jesus was going to do, you know, <laughs> cracking a mountain in two or doing something like that. You know, they were looking for the, the God of the parting of the Red Seas or the, the God of the pillars of cloud and fire. And yet none of that was there. That's because most often God does not work in the big and loud. Most often in our lives, God works in the quiet and the small the little things that are going on, that God is enlaced in with everything. God is not loud. God is quiet. 
The working of God is as quiet as a seed hitting the ground. The work of God is as quiet as the rising of bread in an oven. The working of God is as quiet as a baby laying in a manger. As quiet as a body lying in a tomb. Yes, God has his moments of big and loud. But most often when God works in our lives, he works in the quiet, in the small, in the things that we can hardly perceive. Because you know what? God works the way God works. And boy, does that frustrate us sometimes, right? Sometimes we're, I want it right now. Come on, God, make that miracle happen. I've been praying, make it happen. And we get frustrated because it doesn't happen. But that's because God works on his time, not our time. God doesn't care about when things happen. He cares about his plan being laid out. And so sometimes we're silly enough to think about what our wants are and what we're asking God for. And we ask God to show us that he's working. <laughs> show us that you're working. Maybe what we should be asking God is give us the discernment to see you working. Because God is always working. God never stops working. God loves his creation, all of us, so much that he is always working in our lives for our betterment. Sometimes that's afflictions. Sometimes that's roadblocks that we have to get over. Sometimes those roadblocks are there to make us stronger for what's ahead, to make us better prepared for what's next to us. Maybe for us, life would be a lot better if instead of asking God, why did you do this to me? We ask God, what do you want me to learn from this? Where do you want my heart to be in this trouble? In my pain, in my tears, in my suffering? Not why are you afflicting me this way? But what do you want me to learn? What are you trying to teach me by this? How can I change to be the me that you want me to be? Because in the end, that is God's plan, to make us the person he wants us to be, not the person we want us to be. If we go chasing our own dreams, we end up like those Israelites in Ezekiel, a rebellious and unfaithful people. It's only when we follow God, when we hear his voice, that we can truly be the people that he is calling us to be. We can live into his plan for us. And that's when the doors open and the pathways become straight. When we listen for God's voice. So that's what we need to pray for. We need to pray for that discernment. We need to pray for that contemplation. That we can get closer to God. That we can hear his voice more clearly about what he wants for us. That we can hear more about what we're supposed to be learning by the afflictions that we face. God does not work in the big and loud. God works in the small, in the quiet, in the little things that are sometimes just past our perception. God is still working. And Jesus shows that today in the gospel. He could have gone big and loud on those guys. He could have done some big marvelous miracle on them to show them that he was God. But he didn't. He walked away from them instead of getting into a fight. And you often wonder why the two parts of this gospel are connected. It's because what God did next through Jesus was that quiet and small part. He got his 12 disciples together. He anointed them with the Holy Spirit, and he sent them out to preach God's word, to exercise demons, to heal those who were sick, to feed those who were hungry, to do his work in the world. It was probably not even noticeable to the people in Jesus' town. 
but because of their unfaith, he did great things somewhere else. He went to other towns, to other regions, and taught the word. We're called to do the same thing. Just like those apostles, Jesus calls us to go out, to go out into the neighborhoods. Does your neighborhood recognize Jesus? Does your neighborhood have faith that he is God's son? Do you open your doors to him in faith? Or is that door shut in his face? And we say, we know you too well. When we lose our faith, we lose our power to make anything happen. We lose our power to let God intervene with us in any way. It is through faith that we get the power of God. Through the Holy Spirit that resides within us already. That's the power that propels us forward. That's the power that moves us closer to God and to doing the work of Jesus Christ. That's what we are called to do today by this gospel. To go out and show the world not what unbelief looks like, but what belief looks like. What it means to be faithful to God. What it means to trust in his word and rest in his word. That is our call today. And then to go out and share that with the world. Think on God. Pray to God. Ask for that discernment. Ask for him to show you what it is he wants you to do. Not why did you do this to me, or why did you put me here, but where are we going? What's next? And listen to his voice. You'll notice in our call today that we pray that we might love our neighbor as he loved us. We are a world today that is sorely in need of that love, of that peace, of that care for one another. But it comes from us. We're the ones that have to do it, just like the 12 that were sent to the neighborhoods. Today, Jesus Christ sends us into our neighborhood to be those 12 multiply and to feed and to care and to heal in a world that oh so sorely needs it. Let us now reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed found on page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, Light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came out from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our prayers of the 
people this morning are guided by Form 6 on page 392 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us kneel before God as we lift our voices to him in prayer. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who remain the gospel, and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Douglas, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God and his church for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Gracious God, we do lift up to you this day, St. Mary's Episcopal Church and her people, beseeching you to guide, guard, and protect us and give us your grace and blessing as we do your ministry in this place. We pray to you for all of those on our parish prayer list, those preparing for or recovering from surgeries and procedures, those with need of ongoing care and healing, and those with urgent need this day especially Butch Lalumir, George Grippenberg, Sheila Highsmith, Fred Wells, Belle Thompson, Frank Goody, Lee Conley, <laughs> Deacon Ben and Betty Krillman, Chick Meach, B.B. Kane, Dennis Ashford, Bob Russell, D. Russell, Bill Meach, Ryan Meach, Cecil Hicks, Jerry Rice, Edward Crabb, Scott Croft, Luca Noose, Sherry Had, Brenda McAdams, Oliver and Barbara DeWitt, Pam Lewis, Doug Menard, Mark McNary, George Belts, Haig Sahigian, Henry Vogler, Ted Benz, Hunter Weimer, Kathy Couch. Are there others to be named? Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. Gracious God, we especially lift up to you today in thanksgiving, Sarah Oliver, Lily Infinity, Jasmine Reed, Rachel Atkins, Mary Catherine Alston, Andrea Alston, beseeching you to guide, guard, and protect them and give them your grace and blessing as they prepare to bring new life into We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever. We pray for all who have died, that we may, they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them, who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. So uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand as you are able. My brothers and sisters in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please greet each other with the sign of peace.
questions, and uh, the biggest one is in the back of your bulletin, and that is uh, May Ross has sent us a new list of things that she needs for her summer feeding, and for those of you who may not be aware, um, May Ross does a lot of feeding of the Cox Elementary kids, particularly when school is out, and that sometimes is the only warm meal they get during a day is when they come to her place for lunch or dinner. So um, anything you can do to help her out in her ministry is very much appreciated. Uh, we have baskets in the back of the church. You can bring it and put it in or even in the parish hall. So um, anything you bring, they come and pick it up every Monday and they'll put it to immediate use. So uh, the list is there. Just uh, keep on keeping on and help on her because uh, we've had a long, long uh, relationship with May and uh, she does such good work in this community. I'd like to see us continue to do that. Um, two things. Now that the 4th of July is over with, we're going to get back to our regular schedule. So starting this week, women's breakfast is on at 6.30 on Wednesday. Men's breakfast is on 6.30 on Thursday. And Bible study is 10 o'clock on Thursday, followed by Eucharist at 11. So we're back to our normal schedule of things and our normal private things. So we invite you to be a part of that. If you ever thought about joining us, now's the time to do it because we're coming back together. And we're all going to be excited about getting back together. Um, on a more somber note, just to let you know as a reference, um, I got a call late Friday night. There had been an altercation here on the church grounds that I believe bled over from Price Park, uh, and apparently a gunfire was involved, and uh, one of the people was taken to the hospital, the other was arrested, I'm assuming the one with the gun. Uh, um, but the police kind of handled it all, I was notified of it later, but I just as a congregation want to let you know so that if somebody in the community asks you, what happened with the shooting at St. Mary's? You can let them know, A, it was 10.30 at night, nobody was here, and B, it was just at the corner of our property and didn't involve anybody at St. Mary's. But, you know, sometimes your community leads into you and you have to deal with that. But I just wanted to let you know uh, that that went on so it wasn't a surprise to you if somebody brought it up. So, um, but other than that, things are good. So, and I thank you all for being here and seeing all of your lovely faces. Uh, we always celebrate birthdays. Celebrating this week are Heather Keeper, B.J. Croft, Jim Tabb, Mimi Cass-Clark, Linda P., and Anna Elizabeth Oliver. Come on down. Come on down. Blessings abound. especially thank you for those milestone days, our birthdays, that we can stop and reflect on our life to live with you and with each other. Gracious God, I lift up to you all of those who celebrate birthdays this week, most especially these, your servants, Linda and William and Jim, and I just ask you to, to be with them on their special day as they celebrate. I ask you to let it be a day full of your grace and blessing and just that they would have just wonderful celebrations, joyful celebrations with friends and family to celebrate their year of walking with you. And we just ask you to continue to bless them in all that they do. In the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And may God bless you all richly on your birthdays. God bless. So I don't have any, yes ma'am? Anniversaries. The anniversaries. I was going to say, I don't have any unless somebody has one I haven't blessed. Anybody else have an anniversary that they missed because of travel or spouses, partners, those that we share our lives with, those that we can lean into in our time of need and lean into us in theirs so that neither of us should fall. Gracious God, I lift up to you, Carol and Clem, and ask you to be with them as they celebrate their anniversary this week. Gracious God, just let it be a day full of your grace and blessing, but also let them take a moment to focus on you 
as the heart and soul and center of their union. And we just ask you to let them have joyous celebrations as they celebrate their life together and their continued life walking with you. And we ask all this in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. May God richly bless you on your anniversary. Happy anniversary. Um, surgeries and procedures. Anybody going in for surgeries or procedures? Come on now. God, I lift up to you these, your servants, George and Mike, and I ask you to be with them as they go in for surgeries and procedures this week. Gracious God, I ask that you already be with them and already be felt within them to take away any fear and anxiety they have, to give them comfort and peace, and let them rest in your peace, that peace that passes all understanding. Gracious God, I also ask that you let the power of your Holy Spirit be within them to already be mending those things that are broken and fixing those things that need fixing. And I just ask you to be with all the doctors and nurses and staff that will attend to them, that they will do it with grace and compassion and mercy. And gracious God, we just ask you to be with them through the procedure, through the aftermath, through the healing that comes with it. And be with them step by step, day by day, to bring them to your wholeness. And we ask this in the name of your Son, our great healer, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And God bless you both. Anybody traveling? Are you traveling? Yep. 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 Where are y'all traveling? Minnesota. Minnesota. God, we thank you for this great, big, wonderful world and all of the beauty and majesty of your creation that is revealed to us in it. Gracious God, we thank you for the freedom that we have to traverse this country and this world and to, to see all of your majesty and beauty on display. Gracious God, I ask you to bless Glenn and I ask you to bless, Be bless Becky as they go on the road to go back to Minnesota this week. Gracious God, I just ask you to be with them. However they might travel, be it land or sea or air, and just when you're with them, make their pathway straight, make their obstacles few, and make their um, delays short. And I just ask you to continue to guide, guard, and protect them on the road, and let them glorify you in all that they do when they get up there, just in all of their conversations and actions. Let people see godly people out of them. And we, as always you do, in the end of their adventures, bring them home safely. And we ask all this in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Bye, Anthony Dios. Yeah, I sure you betcha. You betcha. All right. So, with that being said, this is the time of the service that I say. If this is your first time at St. Mary's, if you are here every now and again, or if you are here week by week, my brothers and sisters, welcome. You are home. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
celebrating Eucharistic Prayer B on page 367 in the Book of Common Prayer, Eucharistic Prayer B. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection, opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Christ has taught us we are bold to pray. Our Father, 
and sisters in Christ, this is the table not of the church, but of the Lord. It is made ready for those who love him and for those who want to love him more. So come you who have faith and you who have love, you who have been here often and you who have not been here long, you who have tried to follow and you who have failed, come. Because it is the Lord who invites you. It is his will that those who want him should meet him here. Sister Daniel, the body of Christ, in heaven. My sister Freda, the body of Christ, is in heaven. My sister Alice, the body of Christ, is in heaven. My sister Jean, the body of Christ, is in heaven. My sister Melanie, the body of Christ, is in heaven. My brother Ken, the body of Christ, is in heaven. My sister Shay, the body of Christ, is in heaven. My sister Melinda, the body of Christ. Sister Carol, the body of Christ, is in heaven. My brother Clem, 
the body of Christ. My sister Debbie, the body of Christ. My sister Jan, the body of Christ. My sister Cheryl.
First Communion Prayer can be found on page 366 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. And almighty and gracious God, we thank you for the gift of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Let him live in our minds and live in our hearts that we might have a pure and strong faith in you and go where he calls us. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you this day and forevermore. Amen.